So today we will look at a few ways we can create interesting sequences with the new logic module from Instruo EAS. Of course, this module is also available in hardware and in VCVREC it's available for free. So first of all, I want to show you how we can sort of gate sequences with end logic. Now, usually when we speak about uh, Boolean logic, we speak about um, signals that are high or low, some, some sorts of gates, for example, right? So an end logic, which we have here in the upper section, means basically when one signal and the other, only when they are both high, we will get a gate out of the end output. Now here I have a simple sequence with a sec3, sequencing a toner, right? An eight step sequence. Now what I can do, the clock I'm using here is coming from the LFO. So if I send this clock first to the end logic and I'm using, and I will use another gate to the second, um, to the second end input, right? And this will be the clock for the sequencer. Only when both of them are high, the clock will actually go through to the sec three. So again, now only the LFO is working, only the LFO is going up and down. The second gate is closed. And this is why there is nothing going through to the clock input. Now, as long when and as long as I will push this button here, the clock will actually go through. This is uh, something you can also do basically with the VCA. A VCA is also a sort of an end logic. And, um, but here we have everything in one module. So now I will click and hold the button and the sequence will run. I will uh, let go of the button and the sequence will stop. Right, and like this, we can sort of gate sequences in all sorts of different ways. Of course, I have here an example already. I have again here the sec three, and I have one clock multiplied by two clock going to one input and a divided by nine going to the second input. So only when both of them are high, a gate will come out of the um, and output that will clock the sequencer. Now this is not divided by uh, four or divided by eight or divided by 16, it's divided by nine. So it will meet the eight step sequence in different places and will always play a sort of a different um, row of notes. This is uh, being quantized by Harmonig, sequencing Neoni, another new um, uh, module from Instruo, going through some delay. Of course, all of the patches will be available to download. There will be a link in the description if you want to take a closer look. Another interesting section of EAS is the NOT section here down that will basically um, output the, um, the opposite of what's coming in. So when a gate, an incoming gate is high, it will output nothing. When an incoming gate is low, it will output a gate. So what I can do, I can basically invert, sort of invert, um, invert this divided clock. So if I'm going to use the divided clock out of the NOT output, we will get basically the opposite. So when the sequence plays, this other voice I have here will not play. And when the sequence doesn't play, this other voice that I have here with Psych and the IO47 will play. So let's do this. Uh, Psych will play basically chords. Just like this.
let's have a look now at all logic, this is here the sort of a middle section of EAS, right? It means that whenever one incoming signal is high, or when the second incoming signal is high, or when both are high, we will get a gate out of the gate output, right? So here I have a button, I can just activate an open gate. So if I open one gate, have a look here, the gate, the output here is on, it's high. If I close it, this will go down, it will go off, right? If I open the second button here, we have again a gate, so whenever one or the other, and when I have both of them high, still the gate is open. So whenever one or the other, or when both are high, we will get a gate out of the output. This basically means it is great for combining gates, combining sequences, combining stream of uh, streams of triggers into a one a stream, right? So here again, I have a simple sequence with a sec three, sequencing a tona through harmonic, right? It will sound like this. Right, and I want every now and then to add sorts of ratchets or sorts of extra notes here and there, but I want this sequence to stay always the same and add to it. So what I will do, I have here branches from mutable instruments, basically it's a Bernoulli gate, it will add probability to incoming gates or incoming clocks. I will show you also an alternative you can use if you don't have this in hardware and you want to try this in hardware. Right, but in VCV we can just use this, it's also available for free. I'm going to use a clock multiplied by 8. Right, we can also use different multiplication, we will do this later on. This will go to branches and now Let's say I will use output A, according to the settings of this knob here, there will be a chance, there is probability that this uh, clock will actually come out of output A. So now what I want, I want to combine this, I want to combine this uh, probability clock, let's call it, with the original sequence. So the original sequence in this case is coming from Harmonig, from the gate output of Harmonig. So I'm going to take this to the first to the first OR input, right? So whenever this is on, whenever this uh, sequence is playing, or whenever the one with probability is playing, or when both are playing, we will basically get a sequence, we will get a gate, and this will gate our voice. Right, and now I can start adding probability for it to start coming out of output A. Right. You can also use a different clock division, maybe a um, uh, clock multiplication, sorry, money multiplied by 8 is too much, multiplied by 4. Right, so we get sorts of extra notes here and there, again, combining the original sequence, the steady sequence, together with the one that has probability, let's call it a sort of a random sequence, although it's not really random. Right, so now we combine them into a new sort of sequence. Now let me show you another section of EAS, which is the XOR. This is right below uh, the OR section. This is this one here. XOR means whenever one signal is high or the other, but not when both. So unlike OR logic, XOR will be only when one or the other, but not when both. So let me demonstrate this again with the buttons. Right, so here I will um, open one button, you will see we have a gate open. I will close it and uh, open the second one, we'll see we have a gate, so whenever one or the other, but when I now activate the second button, you see the gate went down and it's not high anymore. So whenever one or the other, but not when both. This is also really useful for combining gates, for combining sequences. So what I will do in this case, I will take two uh, gate outputs of the SEC3, right? The SEC3 for each step, it has also a gate output. So I'm going to combine step one, let's say, with step five, this is the X or logic. So whenever one is playing or five, we will get a gate here. Of course, they will never play together. This is why it's also useful to use the X or um, because it doesn't truly really matter. It's again combining the gates. Now I'm going to make this a bit more complicated. 
I'm going to get to take the result from here again whenever whenever one or five are playing this will come out of here I'm going to take it I and mean, I'm going to send this to the end logic and I'm going to use again the probability clock so whenever one or five are playing and together with the probability clock only when they are playing together one and the other only then we will get a gate and this gate will get another voice I have here with psych it's playing a sort of a maybe not a bass but a sort of a line I guess so this will gate this voice let's unmute everything right and this will not happen very often again one five and just like now and the probability have to play together right right which is great for having those long um evolving not evolving but moving sequences that are not very repetitive right there is always some movement there there is always some change right and i'm going to add even more variation to this so if you have a look each of the logic sections here all of them they have also the not output so the opposite of what they output so here for example we have end and we have a n end or a not end output which will basically output the opposite so if here it's whenever one and the other here it will be whenever they are not playing together we will get a gate right exactly the opposite here we have or here we have not or here we have x or and here we have not x or x nor right so let's say that i will use the not or logic i know it, it can be a bit confusing but uh, just plug stuff to other stuff and see what happens um, so here i'm going to use this to run another sequencer right so again this is the not or um, and this sequencer i'm going to use to sequence the inversion of harmonic right so we will get again a bit more variation every now and then just like this Right, so again we have many options in one module uh, even a small module 4 hp module and um, many logic options that we can use to add variation now what if you want to try this in hardware and you don't have branches or a different module that can add probability you can use basically sample and hold i will use tie also for means true but any sample and hold will work basically a sample and hold will output random voltage that whenever it crosses a certain threshold EAS will recognize it as an open gate right as a signal that is high which means that you can also use sample and hold and since sample and hold is more or less random this will uh, have also a sort of a random effect and it will be quantized to the clock because I'm going to use the clock to clock the sample and hold right so you if you don't have something like branches in hardware and you want to try this in hardware you can also use sample and hold Now EAS can also be really interesting for generative patches. So I have here OCT, which will basically output eight unsynced LFOs, triangle LFOs. And just as I mentioned before with the sample and hold, whenever the LFOs will go above a, th a certain threshold, above a certain level, EAS will recognize them as open gates or as high signals. Right, so let's use two LFOs. For example, I will use those two here. Again, they are unsynced 
they are not synced uh, to one another so I'm going to use them in the or output whenever one or the other or both are considered high we will get a gate out of this output here and I'm going to use this gate to trigger a sample and hole again tie from instruo and um, which will generate most of the pitch information for this patch right going through harmonic and uh, sequencing neoni once right I'm mixing two waves of neoni again the patches will be available to download and this will be the first voice so let's use this output to trigger the sample and hold Right now, for now, even though the LFOs are unsynced, they will still be repetitive, right? Because they are just oscillating. But what we can do, we can create a sort of a feedback modulation loop, right? So um, OCT through EAS is triggering tie or the sample and hold, and we will use the sample and hold to modulate the LFO, to modulate OCT, right? So we will get more variation. Right, so already we're getting something a bit more interesting. Right, now let's use two more LFOs. Let's use, for example, the second LFO and this one LFO number five. This will go to the XOR, so whenever one or the other, but not when both are high or considered high, we will get a gate. This gate will um, bring us another voice. I'm using here the filter from Struo, the IO47, as a voice. It can self-oscillate. It has even a one volt per octave input. So this is another voice that I'm going to use. Right. Now what I will do, I'm going to use this result here, right, what we have coming from here, and I'm going to use this and send this to the end logic, so whenever this here, and let's say this LFO here from down are high or considered high, only when both of them are high we will get another voice, which is a sort of a bass F here with psych. So only when both of them are high or considered high, which will happen soon, we will get this voice. And again, the LFO is always moving, uh, thanks to the sample and hold, thanks to tie. So everything is always changing. And here we have our bass. Right, and I will use the not output of, let's say, the, the OR, right? I will use the not output to bring in another voice. This is basically a copy of uh, the first voice we had, just going through a VCA and a delay, right? Just to add more texture to everything. <laughs> 